In this video, we're going to talk about flash powders. We're going to talk about how to make them and compare them one to another. Uh, wait a second. I think there's somebody else that wants to say something. Hello. This is Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball back to talk to you about flash powders. Big flash. We got seven different types here, but when I was doing my research there online, I found over a hundred types of flash powders. I think there's maybe even more, but I picked seven because they're the only chemicals I have. So, we're going to be using ten different chemicals, and we're going to review them right here. Now, you be safe out there, you know. You don't want no flash powder going off in your eyes, or your hands, or in your hair. Just be safe. We got number one, potassium nitrate and magnesium them two of them chemicals i underlined each one of them chemicals so you need you need to look at them and these are the 10 different types we got right here so that's nitrate magnesium one to one ratio these are all by weight i drew that little funny thing right there to remind you this is not by volume uh this is not by ounces liquid it's by weight we're talking grams milligrams that kind of stuff you know Next one, ammonia nitrate and magnesium, also a one to one. That's by weight. Zinc and sulfur. Now that gets a little tricky because it's three to one. You need three parts zinc to one part sulfur. Next one, potassium permanganate, aluminum, and sulfur. Now you can switch out that aluminum and you can use magnesium. See that? So one aluminum, two magnesium. I think the magnesium is a little bit nicer and brighter, for sure. And those go three, two, one, like you count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, potassium from magnate, three parts. Aluminum or magnesium, two parts. And that's all for just one part. Next, we got potassium per sulfate. And there's that magnesium again. It's common. And you want that in a three to two ratio. Three parts. Potassium per sulfate, two parts of magnesium. Number six, we got ammonium per chlorate and aluminum. Now you notice know kind of trend here, it's either aluminum or magnesium all the way up except for this one. Now, those are very common. Ammonium per chlorate and aluminum, now you want that in a four to three ratio. And number seven, this last one you got to be a little tricky with. Some people say this might be a little bit on the dangerous side but I've done it and it, it seemed okay that potassium chlorate is missing one oxygen compared to the other potassium perchlorate and aluminum and sulfur and you want down at three to four to three ratio yeah I should have done that different but three to four to three and the sulfur got them little parentheses there because you don't necessarily need that. That makes it burn more fast, bright, well, you know, a little better. So if you don't use that sulfur though, you just want these in potassium, chloric, and aluminum in a one-to-one -one ratio. One-to-one -one ratio. Yep. Yep, that's about it there. Flash powders, 10 chemicals. These are seven of about 100 plus things that you can mix and make a flash powder. So just be careful when you're doing this. I think that's about it again. Thanks. These are the 10 chemicals that Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball was talking about that we're going to mix together in different ratios. And uh, we'll see if we can find out which flash powder is the brightest, if that's possible. Here are the seven mixes of flash powder that were discussed that we'll be trying out shortly. I'll be measuring three grams of each of the flash powders into cups, which are labeled with each one of them. And uh, so there's an equal amount in every one. Then I'll be cutting seven pieces of this cannon fuse and sticking it in the top of the cups so it's all even. And uh, we'll see how it goes.
And finally, the seven cups with fuses in them for the seven different flash powders. All right, we're going to go test them. I've got my Lux meter set up here. It'll stay in the same place. And then I put a piece of wood down here too, so I know exactly where to put everything so we can measure the light given off by each one. Set a standard, I'm going to light just plain magnesium. That's magnesium powder. Burns pretty bright. And we got an 84, I'll put it that way. Next mix is potassium nitrate and magnesium. Dang, that was bright. Potassium nitrate and magnesium, we have a reading of 1,098 lux. Next mix is ammonium nitrate and magnesium. Not much. A little bit surprised. Still watching the uh, ammonium nitrate and magnesium to see if anything... Ah! There we go. Okay. Ammonium nitrate and magnesium gave a reading of 2,216 lux. Next mix is zinc and sulfur. Hmm. Not much. It is burning. It's just very low grade. The very pretty blue flame though. Hey. There we go. Our zinc and sulfur gave us a reading of 83. Our next mix is potassium permanganate, magnesium, and sulfur. I figured that one would be good. Potassium permanganate, magnesium, and sulfur gave a reading of 2,169 lux. Our next mix is potassium persulfate and magnesium. You know, that only gave us a reading of 696, but I really think that's off. I I think the amount, most of the flash went above where the phone was located. So, uh, yeah, a little unfortunate, but pretty amazing flash. This next mix is ammonium perchlorate in aluminum. That gave a reading of 9,609. Our next mix is potassium chlorate, aluminum, and I did add sulfur. Nice. Our potassium chlorate, aluminum, and sulfur gave us a reading of 2,259 lux. So here are the readings I got um, from each flash powder. Uh, the left side, of course, is the mixes, and the right is the actual lux reading. I started with magnesium and got an 84. As you follow these down, they make sense. The zinc and the sulfur registered at 83, and the potassium persulfate magnesium measured at 696. I thought both of those were pretty inaccurate. Um, the brightest 
was the ammonium perchlorate in aluminum, which seemed to be the brightest when I saw it. But I think that phone was not measuring as accurately as I thought for two reasons. Number one is the flash powders had to be bright for a long time for it to get an accurate reading. I think part of that is because it's an older phone. Um, so I don't believe the ones that flashed quickly but were bright got read properly. And the second reason is because the potassium persulfate magnesium especially, the brightest part occurred above where the phone was pointing. So it's unfortunate, but in general, I think the ammonium perchlorate and aluminum did give the brightest reading for the longest period of time.